Hi there, and welcome to the Jelvix channel. Our Jelvix experts are frequently asked about the things they wish they knew before starting to work with a specific programming language. And this time, we've decided to collect and present these insights in this video. So, welcome to our Rust 101 guide. From code review to top benefits, we've got you covered. We are Jelvix, a software development partner for industry leaders. We post weekly videos on tech in five minutes. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure to watch the video till the end to explore the top cases where Rust is the best choice. So let's get started. Number one on our list is Rust's ownership system, which is unique and fundamental to understanding how Rust works. In Rust, every value has a single owner and ownership can be transferred or borrowed as needed, ensuring safe memory management without a garbage collector. As demonstrated in the code, ownership of a string is transferred from S1 to S2, making S1 invalid and preventing its use. This ensures safe memory management without the need for a garbage collector, guaranteeing that each value has a single owner at a time and preventing common issues like dangling pointers and data races. Another specialty of Rust is borrowing references to data instead of transferring ownership. With borrowing, you can have multiple references to the same data, ensuring safety and efficiency, particularly in concurrent programming. As an example, in this Rust code, the calculate length function borrows the string S1 using an immutable reference, allowing it to read and return the string's length without taking ownership. This borrowing mechanism ensures that S1 remains valid and usable in the main function after the function call. Number three on our Rust list is lifetimes. In Rust, there's a way of ensuring that references are valid for as long as they are needed, enforcing constraints and preventing issues like use after free errors. Check out this example. It demonstrates the longest function returns a reference to the longer of two string slices, but the nested scope in main causes one of the references to become invalid after the scope ends, leading to a potential compile time error. This demonstrates Rust's safety mechanism in managing lifetimes and preventing dangling references. Now, let's discuss another powerful Rust feature, pattern matching. It enables matching different data patterns, facilitating concise and expressive code to handle various cases effortlessly. For example, this part of Rust code categorizes a given number into different groups based on its value using a match statement in Rust. Depending on the value of the number, it prints different messages, such as indicating if the number is a prime, a teen, or not particularly special. Moving on, here comes the feature you'll definitely like. Rust has a robust error handling mechanism that encourages developers to handle errors explicitly, making the process clear and concise. Let's see the magic in action. As demonstrated, this Rust code defines a function, read username from file, which attempts to read the contents of a file named hello.txt and returns either the file's contents as a string or an error. In the main function, it calls read username from file, printing the username if successful or an error message if there's an issue. As easy as pie, isn't it? If this isn't enough, let me tell you about concurrency and parallelism in Rust. Thanks to Rust ownership and borrowing system, writing concurrent and parallel code in Rust is safer and easier compared to many other languages, making it a great choice for building scalable and performant systems. Just look at this Rust code, demonstrating concurrent execution using threads. It spawns a new thread to print numbers from 1 to 9, while the main thread prints numbers from 1 to 4, showcasing parallelism in the program execution. Another important Rust feature is zero-cost abstractions, which allow for writing high-level abstractions without sacrificing performance. In Rust, the concept of zero-cost abstractions refers to the idea that high-level language constructs, such as generics and closures, incur no runtime overhead compared to lower-level counterparts. For instance, the apply function in the provided code demonstrates this concept. It accepts any function matching a specific signature without runtime cost. This showcases Rust's ability to optimize high-level constructs into efficient code execution without sacrificing performance. Another must-know essential is Cargo, the package manager and build system. Cargo simplifies project management by handling build configurations, dependencies, and project sharing. For example, by specifying rand equals 0.8 in cargo.toml, Cargo automatically downloads and integrates the rand crate into your project, handling versioning and compatibility. With Cargo build and Cargo run, all build configurations can be managed automatically, allowing you to focus on coding. Besides, Rust provides support for a range of tooling and IDEs to meet your workflow and development environment needs. Summing up the above-mentioned benefits, Rust offers a blend of robustness and high performance, memory safety, usability, and concurrency without a garbage collector. However, some aspects must be considered before starting programming with Rust. First, while Rust provides excellent performance and safety, Achieving these benefits may take more development time. Also, be sure to evaluate Rust compatibility with your current tech stack. Rust integrates seamlessly with C and C++, but integrating with managed language like Java and C Sharp, as well as scripting languages like Python and JavaScript, often requires additional tooling and can be more complex. Also, Rust advanced concepts like ownership and lifetimes contribute to its learning curve, particularly for newcomers to systems programming. 
Besides, maintaining Rust code requires proficiency in its features and best practices. However, you shouldn't stress out, as there are plenty of resources available to help you learn Rust, from books and tutorials to documentation and numerous community forums. Lastly, check out the list of cases where Rust might be a suitable option and when it's not. And if you're considering exploring other programming languages, check out our Node.js versus Golang video. Also, support us by liking this video and leaving a comment. And don't forget to subscribe and press the bell button. Bye for now.